Matthew, tell us uh, what we're looking at here. So we're looking down from the visitor centre onto the area of the car park where Richard III was found in 2012. From our point of view, Richard III's grave is at the top of the screen. This is a time-lapse film and it's 11 minutes long. How much real time does that cover? So the, the 11 minutes represents a four-week period in July 2013 when we carried out the second excavation. And I think the, the first thing to emphasise is this is the bit of the excavation you don't often get a chance to see. The, the movement of the earth at the beginning. Medieval archaeology in Leicester is over a metre below ground and that's a lot of soil to have to shift away from site to start off with. So right now it looks like a construction site. Which is true, in fact it is, because this is before the visitor centre was built. This is the start of that process of turning the site into the visitor centre and, and the very first um, phase of any construction in, in Leicester would be an archaeological excavation. So it is essentially a building site. And you're going in here with an orange digger we can see, is that a dangerous thing when you've got this archaeology to uncover? You, uh, there's, surpri there's a surprising amount of finesse with mechanical diggers um, and we're constantly monitoring it and as soon as we start uncovering archaeology we stop the digger going anywhere near. At the bottom of the screen now you can see the barriers surrounding an area where archaeological um, remains have already been uncovered and we're, we're stopping the digger going near it. And then or some more barriers have just gone in but then to the top towards the top of the screen there are some more orange barriers what's up there so that's where richard's grave is at the top of the screen and the orange barriers are stopping the uh, showing sort of the extent of where we've uncovered the archaeology and, and you'll see the digger working its way back towards the the top right where the exit is so what's different here compared to the 2012 dig this is a, a year later july 2013 and um, in 2012 as you said we just exposed some trenches what's different here it's a much bigger excavation it was very keyhole the original excavation and the problem with that is you don't often see the full picture this is allowing us to see a much bigger picture over the over the church you can see in the centre now the archaeologists are removing the soil and rubble from the area of the trench we backfilled in 2012. The, that white um, material was covering the original excavation. You can see they've just uncovered the stone coffin and the floor levels in, in the centre of the church choir. So the diggers, the, the trucks have gone now and you're still exposing soil. How are you doing that? So this is, everything is done by hand now. So all the loose soil left behind by the digger is removed by hand and then the archaeologists slowly start cleaning up um, the archaeology to assess what we've got. You can also see in the top uh, right-hand corner the construction on the vi uh, viewing platform has started as well, which was an integral part of this excavation. We wanted to have the public be able to see what we were doing this time around. So the viewing platform was one of the key aspects of this project. And why couldn't you do that in the 2012 dig? Uh, in the 2012 dig, it was still essentially a working car park and, and they were sensitive um, city council buildings surrounding it and we just couldn't have the public on the site at the time. This time it wasn't an issue. It, we, were, we were off the away from those services and so we could have the public on uh, come into the site on a viewing platform. Now developing at the bottom there has just been dug is a, is a quite a large hole. What's, what's there? So we're not actually planning on destroying any of the medieval archaeology. We're just removing the demolition layers from the church down to the final floor levels of the church. But we can have a chance to glimpse at what's underneath those final floor levels by um, digging out the more recent intrusions into the archaeology. And at the bottom there, they've cut us, uh, dug a slot across uh, one of the wall lines of the church to have a look at how deep the foundation trench is, how wide it is, if there's any stone surviving deeper down. It's so deep we, we cover it up when we're not working on it so no one falls in it. Aha, uh -huh, so that's what that fence panel's doing. Yeah. Right? At the top of the screen now, the area around Richard's grave is being investigated. Um, this was the area where we found a fragment of in situ floor tiling. It's the only fragment to survive from the choir of the church. You, you can still see it today in the visitor centre next to Richard's grave. Elsewhere, archaeologists are, um, as I said, removing all that building rubble, uncovering the medieval archaeology, and we then have to decide where we want to investigate further to solve the questions that are developing. Um, where the walls are, do, do they have buttresses, what the wall um, building would have looked like, how many graves, these are all sort of questions we needed to answer. But we're very selective on where we dig to answer those questions, just removing enough of the, the archaeology to answer them without destroying the whole picture. And it's worth saying that you're doing this because the visitor centre is being built here, so you, it, this is a chance to see what the archaeology is like before that happens. It is, and it's uh, the last chance for the foreseeable future because a part of the visitor centre is being built over the top of it. 
So this is we're recording what's underneath just in case the visitor centre might damage it so that we could come up with a mitigating strategy. But it's also it's that last chance. We won't get a chance for a while to explore this part of, of the Greyfriars again. Now it's just looks that the, the colours change there of the soil. What's happened there? Uh, I guess that's it. It's rained overnight. I mean, we, we were blessed with a very nice summer for this excavation. In fact, in some ways it was too hot and too sunny a lot of the time, but we did have the occasional shower. But that helped, in fact, because it, it moistened the ground. It brought the colours out better. So that's something you want. You want sometimes to, to wet the ground just to see. You do. The colour changes in colour are very important and changes in soil density as well. These are all sort of the things we're looking for when we're excavating. At the left hand side now you can see um, stone walls appearing and this is a building just south of the church that we found. This We hadn't found any evidence for this building before in 2012. This was brand new evidence on this uh, this project. We don't know what it is. It might be an earlier chapel for the friary or it could be any number of friary buildings. It looks like it was demolished before the church though because the, the stone foundations are still there in place whereas the church has been completely, the foundations have been completely removed. So we think it might have disappeared during the medieval period, during the lifetime of the friary rather than after it closed. And it's worth saying that these things are removed because Henry VIII dissolves the monasteries and, and people go in and the, the stone is sold. Yeah, so the friary closed in 1538 and was demolished shortly afterwards. And building stone's valuable material in Leicester. So as soon as a building falls out, a stone building falls out of use, locals swarm in and nick all the good stone to use on their own houses. How does it feel? You're unpeeling layers here and, and looking all the way back then to the 16th century and actually beyond. How does that feel? Do you reflect on that? You do. And you always get that sense of excitement when something new turns up. The, the building to the south of the church, that was brand new. We didn't know that existed. That was exciting to find. Finding that stone coffin in 2012 was exciting and incredibly frustrating having to cover it back up without knowing what was in it. Um, so it was, it was good to get a chance to do that in this excavation. You can see how hot the excavation was. We've had to put gazebos up over some of the excavators because of the heat. And we can see, um, so there's the blue tarpaulin to the right, and then below that there's the area where the stone coffin is, which is covered up with a white tar tarpaulin. At the yeah, moment. so the blue tarpaulin represents graves three and four, and the, the white tarpaulin just below it represents the stone coffin, so that's grave five. We finished excavating at this point. Now we're recording. You'll you'll see archaeologists are recording. The only bits of excavation now are where we've we've recognised where there's something we need to work out better to better understand it, and, and we're being more specific in the excavation. The sort of the, the general clean up has finished now. Okay, so now it's a question of going through and mapping what you've found. Yeah, of carefully recording. Everything's drawn by hand. You can now see at the, the sort of top right, archaeologists are starting to excavate the graves. And we can see the stone coffin um, quite clearly now at the moment. Yeah, um, we kept it covered for most of the excavation until we were ready to actually open it and, and lift it. Again, you can see it's rained overnight and this is the day where we actually opened the stone coffin. So we applied a very low-tech approach to this. We simply slid lifting straps under the lid and lifted it by hand. It was too complicated to get lifting machinery into the middle of the site anyway. It took nine of us to lift the stone lid up and inside we found a lead coffin. So the lid of the stone coffin is under the blue tarpaulin at the top of the screen and archaeologists are now recording the rest of the grave and the rest of the stone coffin that's, that's left in the ground. And that will slowly get removed piece by piece. It had already broken in the ground so that we were able to remove it carefully piece by piece every bit of stone carefully recorded how it related to the next stone. So the lid came off in one piece but the, the stone coffin itself was it came already out in, in pieces? Yeah, about 15 pieces or, or so. The weight of the lid had cracked the rest of the coffin in the ground over the last 500 years. Work is still carrying on excavating graves three and four at the top there. These were both in wooden coffins and so all that survived was the skeleton itself. Although well, you could still see the outline of the coffin because the coffin nails still survived in, in situ. And we're keeping it shielded from the public. We let the public on site, but we kept the actual opening of the all the graves shielded from the public. When you find a grave, when you're exposed, how do you find the edge of a grave? How do you know that you've got to the edge of what was dug, the hole that was dug? So 
the grave, someone, when someone's dug the grave, they've dug a hole in the ground, basically. You've got nice compacted ground that they've dug into, and when they've put the soil back in on top of the, the body or the coffin, it's loose, it's uncompacted. That does slowly compact down a bit during the next 500 years, but it always remain looser than the surrounding ground. So you're looking for colour changes, but you're also looking for texture changes. And and the grave edges, you'll feel it with the, the trowel as you're excavating. And what were the key findings from that dig in 2013? Um, this time we, so we got a much better understanding of Richard's, the relationship of Richard's grave with the rest of the church. We had ideas of how it related last time. This time we know precisely how it fits into the church choir. Uh, we've got better information on the church's um, development, on its orientation, its size. We found evidence of new buildings in the friary. Um, it's been a hugely successful excavation. We've, we've sort of doubled our knowledge on the friary from the original excavation. Well, thanks very much for taking us through that. That was my pleasure.